Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope everyone's having a great week. I don't see a picture, so that's a little disturbing. Uh, okay, there we are. We have a picture. So, so cool to see everybody. So, let's see who we have here today. We have, we have John. How you doing? Great to see you, John Deepman. And we have Blue, how are you? And we have John Payne, great to see you. And Color Graphics, Roy, so glad you're here. I'm happy about that. And Roy had a birthday this week, so I wish everybody a happy birthday. Uh, and let's see, I think we're having some video. I hope that's not true. Uh, let's see who else we have. Willie, how's it going? Good to see you, Willie. Nameless subscriber, how's it going? Great, so glad you're here. And so, uh, how's the picture and the sound quality? Uh, let me know. Hey Colette, how are you? Glad you're here. Uh, how's everything going? It looks like everything's okay. I'm just getting weird messages uh, in my control panel. But let me know how the uh, sound is today. Um, Patrick, how you doing? Did the uh, Canadian you know they were playing the uh, in the Stanley Cup? Acceptable to have this bad of uh, internet service. So from here, I'm actually, I have my remote control, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on YouTube. This way I can see what you guys are seeing. So let's see. Uh, hey, S. Lee, how are you? Good to see you. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much for stopping by. We're just checking on this... Uh, internet right now let's see i'm gonna pull it up and see what i you know because let me see be right back Wow, looking at the TV, the picture looks pretty darn good, so I'm happy about that. But, uh, looks like everything's okay. I'm getting some smooth, uh, some smooth, I'm, I'm not getting uh, interrupted, which is good. So I'm glad about that. Oh, thank you, S. I appreciate that so much. Oh, so the last couple of minutes have been good. Okay, great. So... I don't know if you guys could see, but let me see if I can go. See that? That's my TV. Now I can see me, seeing me, me watching me, watching me. So, so that's pretty good. <laughs> uh, okay, so now let's go ahead and make me smaller and make this beautiful woman sharper. Okay, so... Hey, what's up there? Bill, how's it going? Air airspace, how are you, sir? Good to see you. So we're just going to move you over. And I'm going to bring up the image so you can see what I'm working on. Let's see, is it here? Yep, there she is. All right, so we are beginning to uh, get to work here. So, let me go ahead and pull up my reference in Pure Ref. If you haven't gotten Pure Ref yet, please get it. 
the most amazing thing for any artist that uses their computer uh, for reference. I can't recommend it enough. Top 10. And that's on uh, www.pureref.org, I believe. Okay, so... What I'd like to do is... Yeah, it is like time travel. <laughs> yes, it is so, it's so true there, Mr. Willie. It is like time travel. Okay, so here we are. Haven't worked on this painting for a week. I really wanted to keep it, uh, you know, just doing it with you, with you all watching so you get most out of it, even though I was tempted to fiddle with it. But my live streams really are about teaching and about giving people uh, something that they can't get anywhere else on the internet and I honestly mean it because my live stream is the only live stream out there that will show you from beginning to end a portrait and airbrush the only live stream and I'm not doing that to be different or special. I'm doing that because I want to have a live stream where you can rely on to see how I'm going to do that next step. And then you go ahead and apply it on your own. And I think that is my driving force on why I do this. And, and you know, and so it's really important to to uh, make sure that I stay true to the original vision of what my live stream is about. Now I have a really small channel. I mean, my channel doesn't grow as fast and I don't care <coughs> because I want, I want it to grow with those who are, how do I say, you know, it touches them. Because it touches me to give this weekly live stream and those that it touches will be here and that which makes me excited about the process and keeps me coming back week after week hey what's up? so bill good to see you uh mr bill kennedy is the airspace so that's that's good to know and brad how's it going good to see you so with that being said let's go ahead and work on her chin here so, if I was to make this picture bigger or as big as I could, let's see. This chin here has a lot of things going on in this value here. You have a value going on there. So, this is the succession. First you do the shape of the value, right? Then you do the actual uh, tone of the value, where it is in the, in the value scale from light to dark. Then you do the edges, how it reacts to the adjacent shape. And then lastly, what's going on in that shape. Very rarely when you have values in a portrait are the values just, that's it. it there's a lot going on within that value because you're dealing with uh, with irregular shapes especially in faces we have bone and skin and muscles and tendons and all those different things that play a part of moving and undulating that particular part of the face so let's go ahead and blow up her chin and see what we can do to find out what actually is going on there Okay, so the first thing is we want to use our aggressive eraser. Now, it's an aggressive eraser, but it doesn't mean you have to be aggressive with it. So let's go ahead and just very lightly, with the one second rule, try and match up what we see more succinctly in our reference photo to what's happening in our painting that's the trick to match it up right and so so you see 
I have some work to do there. And then I also see it's a little harsh here. So see how a little more aggressive when I wanted to pull out this light. But when I want to just slightly lighten up the value, I can just be ever so light with the pressure. Those who have done digital art know that the lighter the pressure, the lighter the uh, paint is going to uh, show. Or the application of paint will be a lot less. And the whole world, right now, as far as I'm concerned, is in this area. Yes, we are doing the ensemble, but when we get to this stage, we have to start thinking of the smaller drama that's going on in certain areas of the portrait. Distance is everything, remember. Uh, Naval Subscriber says, reminds of Spaceballs. <laughs> everything that is now is happening right now. <laughs> I love it. Pumping that trigger and looking at those shapes. Right here, I can definitely work on this shape here. Remember, when you're erasing, make sure that it's dry because if you erase on wet paper, it's not going to be good. You're going to tear up that paper. So patience in every aspect is so important when working in this technique. If I want it lighter, I just increase my distance. If I want more gradation or softer blends, I just increase my distance. That's it. You know, it's all about distance, observation, and patience. <laughs> That's funny, guys. I'm just concentrating on this area. And I do have my aggressive eraser. And what I want to do is come in with this little tiny light right here ever so tiny and then i'm going to even this out this value out here See how I even those values out? Ever so slightly. It is so hot here. I can't even... I mean, literally, it is so hot. Uh, and humid. So it's been rough here in the studio the last couple of days.
I want it to be very light, so I'm about four inches away. And I'm just gonna ever so lightly get that more youthful appearance in those lips. And also how the lips kind of twist out from the corner. We want to get that feel of them twisting out from the corner. There we go. Alright, so let's zoom out, see what we have thus far. Okay, so we have a nice more youthful appearance now. And let's go ahead and let's meander out from here, from this part. And we'll just move out from the lips to the chin and over to uh, the jaw area. So let's make that happen. about I don't know maybe about four inches from from the surface and I am just ever so lightly pumping that trigger and trying to get some of these lights and darks that are ever so subtle because it's because the turns are very subtle right you have the harsh turns of let's say the side of the face, the nose, the eye socket, but then you have these subtle turns here where the cheeks are, where the uh, insertion, where the lips insert into the mouth area, and uh, and then right here, this area uh, by her chin. So looking at the uh, reference material and then looking at this light, I can see I'm a little bit harsh here, but I want to get the shape correct first. So I'm going to get the shape correct first and then I'm going to adjust the value. I'm going to do that in both areas right here. Some of the areas I'm going to work on, I'm going to work on when I have the white pastel coming later this evening. ever so light right here and you want to follow the grain of the skin and that's like the last thing remember I told you you have to do the shape the, the value uh, the edges then the shape inside the shape and then then lastly is the grain of the skin so there's a lot to go and don't worry about not getting all those elements in the beginning of your journey, but no, that's what your goal is. See how I can calm down that skin there. I'm not even remotely thinking about finishing it or, you know, where I want this to be. I'm just I'm just immersed in the process. That's it. That's all. Just that, you know. Wow, that is hot. Everyone be careful this summer. It's a very hot summer, you know.
Okay, so now I'm going to look at this shape right here on this side of her cheek here, or this side of her mouth. I want to make sure that shape is correct. So I'm just going to investigate it a little bit longer. So let's talk about uh, Iwata and their new ad brushes coming out. Uh, they're not really new air brushes. They're just modified uh, versions of their Eclipse series as well as their Custom Micron series. Anyone out there, what are your thoughts on it? Uh, I have my own thoughts, but love to hear what your thoughts are first because this is a good discussion to talk about. Uh, you know, because that is really something that I feel is, uh, you know, what's happening. And we have to be aware of what's happening in the airbrush community. You know, we're the consumers. We're the bosses, right? So just like anything else, if we are just complacent and some of these airbrush companies do whatever they want, or disguise uh, upgrades or new versions really just making slight modifications of the old version that aren't better uh, we should be aware of that I mean we are the consumers we are the ones who decide what they do with it right we decide what uh, what upgrades the airbrush companies do but if we don't do anything and just continue to buy the airbrushes what's going to incentivize said company from actually making upgrades that will help us to create better art so Willie says what's the difference and from what I can see on all counts is just a bigger cup and uh, so they're raising their prices for a bigger cup I don't understand that and you know I think legally they're changing the name because if they did uh, have the same name then people could get really upset and say this is not the side feed custom micron this is not the side feed eclipse I'm just telling it like it is um, I'm the consumer right you're the consumer if there's a new airbrush out yes we would want to see upgrades why would you why would you make a, you know a side shift for airbrushes and then charge more money you know that doesn't make sense and if we just step back and say okay that's a new custom uh, micron of course the name has changed there's no difference yet you made the cup bigger but what about the people who like to do the way it was are there changes being made that make the manufacturing cheaper and then you raise the prices anyway so those are the questions I think we need to ask uh, so anyone out there know of it I'd love to hear your thoughts or even take a quick peek you know uh, that would be fantastic um, so, and I say that to say this, so my airbrush, basically, you know, why you would want my airbrush, because there are definite upgrades here. There's a lower trigger, there's a better uh, response time for the, uh, the pack valve with the spring. Uh, the backing is, is uh, a different backing, so you can get to the needle quicker. A much better needle that comes further out to give you more detail see that makes sense uh, so so Bill if you know the difference let me know because honestly I want to hear how the new version would give someone like me or any of us here better accuracy or any upgrades except for a larger cup because no one could tell me that and I think it's funny so as consumers in the airbrush world 
make sure you don't fall for that. Make sure that when someone says, hey, it's an upgrade or, you know, what's, what is the upgrade and why am I paying more? So, really, uh, the cup is one change. The distance will be shorter between the trigger and the head as well. Both don't do any good for me, Bill. I'm sorry. Those changes, those are like, those are like minor changes. I mean, I don't see how, Bill, that could be anything that could warrant a higher price, number one, or getting rid of the older, the older version. So, so, okay, let's talk from a marketing standpoint. And this is important, you know. You know, yes, I give... I give really good advice on technique, but when new products come out, whether I'm buying a new phone or a new hat or or a new chapstick, if you're going to say this is new and improved, I want to see it. That 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 doesn't do anything, Bill. Having the distance between here and here doesn't do anything. Any changes like that is negligible. Negligible. So, you know, to actually say that's an upgrade by that company is ridiculous. 100% ridiculous. Because it doesn't make a difference. I teach that when you paint, you paint on an angle so that you can see the point of the airbrush, the point of your airbrush, the point of your needle, and you can see where you're going, right? Look at that. The distance between here and here makes no difference whatsoever, you know? And so thank you, Killer. So you see what I'm talking about. As far as you can tell, the Eclipse version, we, no, it's, no, it, they gave a bigger cup. And, and uh, so they're making sure that the old version isn't uh, available. They're calling it an upgrade. And, <laughs> and... They're raising the prices, Bill. So, I'm not an Iwata guy. I'm fine with that. But I know other people are Iwata uh, airbrush. And Iwata airbrushes are good. But you guys and girls who are consumers, you're the boss. Don't just be like fanboys, you know, with Coast Airbrush and say, Oh, give me, give me a what is it, a uh, pre-order of this airbrush, which is inferior of the one that you have, yet you're going to pay money for this new version, which has negligible, negligible differences. When I buy a brand new, when I buy a brand, so let me see more of me here, because this is important, you know, I'm going to make this smaller. So when I get a new camera, I want upgrades, right? So that means when Canon comes out with a new camera, I know there's going to be something new, right? So, yes, uh, if I had, let's say, this, this camera over here, right? This is the S110. It's an older camera, older camera, the S110. So... With this camera, it has a 2.0 to 5.9 uh, lens on it, which is really good. But when the F-115 came for 50 or $100 more, I want something more for me to go ahead and buy that and then go to Coast Airbrush and say, yeah, let me pre-order that. Why are you pre-ordering something that is just as good as what you already have. Why? It makes no sense. It's marketing and it's good marketing, but it's not good for the airbrush community. So I want to hear what your thoughts on it. So let's hear. Now, Nameless Subscriber said something good. He said, what's the difference between the fancy brushes and the cheap brushes? Um, now, that's a good thing. Now, every good airbrush uh, is manufactured correctly. Every good airbrush is manufactured correctly, meaning that the needle is centered correctly. Uh, 
that the air is there's no air leaks uh, that the needle is manufactured correctly and tapers perfectly uh, all those different things so yes you want to get an airbrush from one of the big names Badger Pache Iwata it pays don't get the cheap airbrushes you'll know the difference believe me um, when you have one of those bad cheap airbrushes well that's the thing um, as far as but you know what, what I'm saying Bill is is that we have to be vigilant vigilant when new things come out and ask those questions what are the upgrades and why are they and I'm just saying uh, Bill that we need to be uh, scrutinized more so someone would say to me Tim what's the difference between the extreme Patriot arrow customized by you and let's say the 105 or the extreme Patriot arrow that comes off of the assembly line I'm not just gonna tell you that I'm gonna tell you what is gonna make this airbrush better what is gonna make your airbrushing better that's why you want to buy an airbrush not because it's shiny or it's new or it has some you know exotic Japanese name or that coast is talking about it and saying you can pre-order that's what I'm saying that's what's important and um, so any airbrush you do purchase you we have to ask ourselves is this airbrush gonna make my work better is this airbrush gonna give me better detail is this airbrush gonna give me better sketching ability all those different things you know uh, Oh, I never, I never mentioned you to be a a, 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 a fanboy at all there, Bill, so you misunderstood me. I've never said that. I'm saying that we should not be like that. We should not be like, oh, we got to go ahead and pre-order this airbrush because it's coming out. I would never call you that. So if that was something that, you know, you... Uh, uh, if I came across that, definitely. You know me better. I would never call you that, Bill. Yeah, so Super Killer says these Akumas will be physically different. Yes, physically different, but uh, what are the advantages, right? What are the advantages? World Exploration says, hello, Tim. Oh, Stefan, how are you? It's great to see you. I'm so glad you're here. Yeah, Creos is a great airbrush because... You know, the airbrush has to have a reason for existing. Not just because we are, you know, looking for the next uh, big thing, but, you know, it's us as airbrush artists who really have to say, okay, what's going on here? Why are you, why is this airbrush here? Why are you getting rid of the old version? Is there a good reason? You're raising the prices, but are you raising the level of, of efficiency or efficacy which is the word that we use lately you know practice is also important yes the importance of a good airbrush is according to what is to be discovered uh, having your hand uh, and finger close to the nozzle is a plus not really I don't think so I because you know what and I understand your point super uh, but you know it really is learning how to use, you know, the angle of approach with the airbrush, right? You know? So if I'm over here, over there, to me, I don't see the difference. But it's the visibility. Now, the only thing that I do see an advantage is from the cup to the nozzle. I think if that's shorter, that's good. But it's really just preference, and I think you'll get used to it, you know? Uh, oh, definitely, Bill. I'm looking forward to a video you're doing on that. And I appreciate your vantage point, and Super Killer, your vantage point, and, and Stefan, and all that. So, you know, so I really wanted to, I wanted to create a discussion tonight on, do you guys feel, because I have my own opinion, but do you all feel that, you know, when an airbrush company says, hey, new and improved, 
we have to say, okay, where's the improvement? And don't believe the airbrush companies for improvement. You know, believe us, you know? Oh, yeah, no. Only, only if uh, Iwata was giving you a free one there, Bill. Yeah, definitely. That's, I mean, their prices are getting a little ridiculous. That's for sure, you know? Uh, so I... I'm definitely looking forward to the SB, uh, the SB, the, uh, what is it, the, the um, Eclipse HPSB, that would be great. No, you are a good airbrusher, Stefan, that's for sure. I love your work, Stefan. So, uh, Super says, when one of the best German airbrushes you ever seen says it's better, what then? Then I would say, find out for yourself. Because that German airbrusher, you know, he has his own opinion. And Super, that's what we have to do. We have to, but I'm going to tell you my opinion. The new Custom Micron, there is no reason except for the larger cup. Then they give me this mumbo jumbo about... Now it's a gravity feed and not a true side feed because of where the uh, insertion point of the nozzle going from the ink to the airbrush. I think that would, I think they were really stretching it. Don't you think? Uh, don't you think they're stretching it? I feel they're stretching it. That's my opinion. I work with airbrushes all the time, uh, six to eight hours a day I'm airbrushing. I wish I could do more, that's how much I love it. So, so when someone says, oh, there's, that's such a negligible difference. So it makes me laugh and then the prices are higher. So, you know, uh, I honestly, I. Now, I'm going to tell you that their side feed, their HP SBS, was one of my favorite airbrushes ever. It was so wonderful. It worked like a custom Micron. It was fantastic. There was no issues with the side cut. No issues. I mean, the size, there was no issues. It was big enough. Unless you're doing a mural, it's more than big enough. And, and the difference of whether the side feed is higher or lower than the paint well is a joke. I mean, it's a joke because it, I can't see how it could make a difference. Oh, thank God that the cup's higher. Otherwise, my painting would have not come out okay. Right? So, honestly, sometimes I'll say a rant on this channel because sometimes I have to because, you know, I see all of this, this stuff, this like marketing propaganda which is ridiculous going on there uh, yeah the old Iwata side cups were really well built and uh, they were expensive and that's not on that's not a plus for Iwata that's for sure but if you needed a bigger cup you would get this cup which was by Aztec and you would stick that on the side feed and you were as good as gold right so you know, uh, tweaking paint is key. Yes, definitely, definitely key. So, so yes. Yeah, so you know, I make my airbrush. You know, I do this airbrush because I believe in it. That's one hundred percent. And if anyone has ever has any questions about my airbrush and what I did to customize it. It's because of me, originally, I wanted something that was going to give me, you know, a lot better control to make me a better airbrush. And this way, you know, I'm able to share it with other artists. Not some silly changes and to point it off as an upgrade, I think is dishonest and unfair, right? Well, I think they're well made, definitely. Uh, I agree that they're well made, but now you have to decide, we have to decide as artists, $149, or let's say you're, you're into the SOTAR, that's like 130 
or you're into the Pache, that's like 100, right? You're going to think, can I use that airbrush and get the job done? Is it good enough for what I'm doing? Or do I need to spend six, $700 on an Iwata? You know, I mean, yes, it's not as shiny and everything like that, but this thing, I'll go head to head with any Iwata airbrush artist any day. And, you know, I have no problems with that. Because I believe that this airbrush can do everything that that seven, six, seven hundred dollar airbrush can do. Uh, oh, that would be great when you're painting more, uh, Stefan. That's fantastic. Oh, look at that. Patch remembers his first airbrush. Oh, and uh, so thank you for that. And um, oh, the airbrush, the Eclipse, no, the Eclipse is a great airbrush. I am not knocking what's good. I am not gonna sit here and tell anyone that the Iwatas are not great airbrushes. They are great airbrushes. But when their marketing team and their developing development team comes out with this, and then Co says, you can pre-order, and I imagine people pre-ordering, be a little more heads up, you know? Honestly, wake up, you know? When, if I'm a big Canon fan when it comes to phone, uh, Canon fans when it comes to cameras, I have the SL2 and the SL3. There were advantages to the SL3 that I liked, and that's why I upgraded, but I liked the SL2 so much, I kept that as well, so I have two cameras, one backup. So when I, I'm not just gonna say, oh, that's, a, that's an upgrade, I'm just gonna get it. No, you have to make sure that you, uh, and that's another thing. If there are slight changes, why are they changing the names? That's interesting. What do you think, honestly? So I want this discussion to be up to you guys and girls out there. So if you're purchasing out there, what, uh, we have some car enthusiasts out there. We have people, I know um, Willie is a car enthusiast. Uh, what are some of the things you look for in cars uh, if you're gonna spend more money? That's a question, right? Um, now Colette, Colette's into a lot of things. Uh, what do you look for when you're going to upgrade? I know Colette is also a photographer. So when you're buying a lens, let's say you have a 50 millimeter lens and you see another 50 millimeter lens, that's a hundred dollars. That's a hundred dollars more. You're gonna look and say, okay, why am I going, I have a 50 millimeter lens it gets great bouquet it's really low aperture so i could i could get like a lot of light yet there's this other 15 50 millimeter lens that's a hundred dollars more why are you purchasing it ask yourself that question and now take that same logic and let's look at those other airbrushes that these companies are pushing and asking you to go ahead and pre-order. Why are you pre-ordering that airbrush? Because there's a closer distance between here and here. Because it has a slightly larger cup. Don't understand it. And you're going to be okay with the price hike. Right? So I'm going to go ahead. And I'm just going to go to. Iwata's website. Uh, let's see if I can get there and we'll take a look and let's see airbrusher airbrushes and spray guns and let's see okay so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, look at this here I think I can actually pull up so I'm seeing here that the custom micron is now selling for six hundred and thirty five dollars and seventy five cents 
that is for the, uh, the CMC and then uh, the side feed is 534 and they're not even showing the upgrade yet on the website so they're gonna be even more pricey than them I imagine so definitely be weary of that be wary of that okay that's definitely so uh, hey German Almana uh, um, uh, Almana seed uh, so Tim what is the name of that ARI airbrush uh, what is the name of that airbrush my airbrush or which airbrush are you referring to German my friend uh, World Exploration says I give one anti-tip dry guys and one drop of soap into the bottle oh that makes a big difference definitely you know definitely um, yes so it's always always best to find the best prices so that is that is very true to find the best prices now I could add a source and if I add a web page let's see if that works um, what page could I go ahead and add let's take a look well I don't know where those new air oh, let's see if they're on coast airbrush let's see so that's www coastairbrush.com let's take a look let's see how this works I'm not sure how this works uh, okay there we are let's see let's take a look together can you all still hear me right now let me know if you still hear me and we're gonna go ahead and look at these airbrushes together and let's see here we are I think this is it let's see if I can find the new ones so let's take a look at the Eclipse let's see if they're available there okay not there not there that's the old one the, okay here we go so right now you have the SPSPS that's the old version and here is where is the new version okay so I don't see the new version of the side feed just yet unless it's down here let's take a look I do see the side the uh, this is the side feed oh my goodness okay it looks like uh, gravity feed airbrush the way it looks here I mean it does look a little weird I have to say and let me get my glasses on here because I have to see this for myself so it says it has an easy to clean side feed uh, gravity side feed negligible difference not impressed and let's see unique compact body and head system I imagine it's the same head assembly that has been on every Eclipse since the beginning which the same type of uh, cone nozzle is in my airbrush right and let's see what else we got here uh, wide adaptive main lever so it's just a slightly larger trigger different shape so it looks like it's the same shape of the trigger that you have on the custom micron instead of the rounded one that used to come with the normally clipped side feed which is the HP SBS so I, that's the and then you have here a quick flush cutaway preset handle uh, I don't see how this is access to the needle so as a seasoned airbrush artist who does this many many hours a day I don't see that as an upgrade at all at all I mean to have that little lever on the back that preset handle is good for when you're beginning like the first two weeks of airbrushing you're never going to use that ever again 
right? You're never going to use that ever again. So, okay, so we're looking at these two things right here. Let me see if there's any... Um, German says, the black airbrush. Okay, so I will get to that German in just a moment to that airbrush I was talking to you about. Um, but, let's see. Okay, so so you see here, uh, I don't see the difference. So anyone out there can tell me why this is, uh, this was a necessary change to the airbrush. Anyone out there that would warrant to go ahead and pre-order this? I'm waiting. And it's 185. I got, I got my airbrush for 149. When I per around 145, between 140 and 150 was the side feed Eclipse. So they're raising the price $40. At the very least, $35. But that's a big chunk. So, to rush out and pre-order an airbrush, they call it All-Star Versatility, and they call it the Takumi. Why are they changing the name? Those are questions you should ask. If it's the same airbrush and they're making slight tweaks, why are they changing the name? And I'm posing that question to you. I'm not giving my point of view right now. Is this warranting a $35 increase? Is there a difference between a gravity feed side feed <laughs> or uh, quote unquote, which is a ridiculous thing to say. It's still being suctioned from the side. Uh, honestly, I don't see it. But I want to know if you guys see it and any of those changes that preset handle when you start for the first two weeks you'll use that preset handle and that's fine but after that you're it's just going to be in the way and then you have the uh, unique compact body and head system it has the same head system assembly uh, it might have changed a little bit more as far as the, the distance but it's negligible every upgrade here is negligible with performance so that's all I wanted to say. I wanted to show that to you uh, because that's the price range that uh, most people will probably pick up right away because as Bill said, you know, that's darn expensive, right? So we can go back and let's see what they say about the uh, custom Micron. Oh, here we go. Look at this. So they do have all the upgrades here. So... And everyone's favorite, uh, pain, uh, favorite one was this one right here, which I owned this airbrush before I got my custom, uh, you know, extreme custom, uh, my customized extreme Patriot Arrow. This was my go-to airbrush. Just beautiful. Everything about it. There's no reason to touch anything. No reason whatsoever. The side cup, there was no issues with the flow from the side cup. There's no need to lift that side cup to make it more of a gravity feed. Never. I always got every drop of, of ink or paint out of that. So, made no sense whatsoever. So, the price on that was $444.50, which is about right. $444.50, right? So, let's go back. And let's see what they did to the custom micron which they uh, let's see how much they rose the price and let's see if the uh, if it warrants a raised price okay so here's the new one which is the side feed oh my god so that one's called the Takumi are they named after like World War two battleships so uh, going back to here okay so Unique compact body and head system. I'm sure it's the same head, head assembly that the other one had because it worked. Uh, it has a larger cup. And again, easy to clean two-piece gravity side feed. The only reason it's gravity feed because it's raised up higher. But the same siphoning is, is that actually the same. It works by suction and to create a vacuum and suction out the air. Whether... The paints here or over here makes no difference, right? 
uh, honestly. Uh, so ask me that, right? So, I mean, answer me that. Again, you know, you have that uh, quick flush cutaway preset handle. This is exactly the same the way it was before. No changes. So I don't see any change whatsoever. No change whatsoever. No change whatsoever. Why would anyone pre-order this airbrush? And let's see the price. So $490. The other one was about $440. So you're, you're looking at a price, a price jump of fifty dollars I don't get it so honestly I don't get it so I'm gonna leave the floor up to you I'm gonna close this out and you all can tell me you know your thoughts so let's see uh, the cup looks too big uh, can you get a smaller one you know why can't you just buy we buy the airbrush that was fifty dollars cheaper uh, nail subscribers see your point uh, trying to make always told people what's the point in spending hundred fifty dollars on the latest pair of Nikes every month when a twenty five twenty dollar pair of shoes will cover your feet just as well yeah it's all about performance honestly Oh, and about the airbrush, so uh, German was asking me, this is my customized Extreme Patriot Arrow. There's a link in the description where you can learn more about it. And uh, so that's, that's cool. And let's see. Uh, and Patrick says, I saw it, but I don't know more, uh, more I can have. Uh, Super Killer says they changed the name. Uh, it's a model series like a Ford Mustang or it's uh, World War II battleships. Uh, so uh, you keep saying it's negligible without any first hand testing. I do have years and years of first hand testing with the original Iwata airbrushes. And so I know what would be the difference. Not just, you know, I played with it years and years. So I can definitely tell you without a shadow of a doubt, there are no upgrades there because they would have mentioned them. The only upgrades is that it's closer. So honestly, you know, have a good night, Brad. Take care. And uh, they are negligible. And definitely... Um, not an extra 50 or 60 dollars so that's my that's my point you know I have this live stream because I want to help airbrush artists out and that's it and that's my only uh, thing of course I have to pay the bills so I sell little things here and there I sell classes I sell airbrushes uh, yes um, Hey Raul, how's it going? No, the older version worked. So I can't see uh, if there were upgrades and I would see upgrades, right? I mean, they would talk about it. When, when Canon comes out with a better, a much better camera that has more megapixels, or has a better focusing system. Hey, Michelle, como estas? Estoy muy contento, okay? Tu estas aquí. So glad to see you. Exactly, Patrick, exactly. So let's, let's as a community make sure that we put these companies the test we're the boss we're the consumers uh, thank you Michelle I'm so glad you're here I don't care if I lose any kind of uh, people watching tonight because this is something that needs to be said and this is my forum and this is our community so yes we have to be the community that actually will tell the truth 
So I have no problem if I step on anybody's toes or they're not happy. I have no problem with that. I'm going to speak my mind and say things that I feel are true and honest. And, you know, I won't, I won't uh, ever be sponsored by a company I don't believe in that I don't think is out for the artist's well-being and to help them, you know. <laughs> Michelle says, my house, my rules. <laughs> I appreciate that. You know what? Honestly, as a seasoned aircraft, airbrush artist, super, when you get one of them, I want to see how much better it is, you know? Uh, thank you, everybody. So Raul says hit that like button. I appreciate that. I'm just saying, you know, hey, just because they, their people on their payroll says it's great, I want to see the difference. I want to see the difference, uh, super killer, honestly. And I'm not saying that there is no difference. I'm saying, why are we pre-ordering something that we don't know is a real upgrade? And if it's a $30 or $50 change in price, right? So I, I'm, I'm for you, Super. I want you to uh, make sure you put Iwata or whatever company to the test when they come out with a new airbrush. Honestly, I want to... I want them to go ahead and, you know, I want them to go ahead and uh, put their money where their mouth is. I sell my airbrush. I don't know. I'm showing everyone every day what it can do. So I'm not, I'm not saying, hey, this is an upgrade. This is great. You know, you have this uh, little thingamajig back here and, uh, you know, you have this writing right here. This writing is really great. That's an upgrade. No, that's not how it works. You know, you have to show what it is. And I guess I just have a confusion why people are up are are pre-ordering this. You know. Oh, thank you, Patrick. I appreciate that. Patrick says he loves the portrait, and so. So, yeah, uh, we have to, and I'm going to be a voice of, of other airbrush artists. And I'm going to say, well, you know, what are you doing? You know, honestly, we have to ask ourselves. Wow, that's great that you get UPO for good prices. That's fantastic. We're just going to continue working here. So that's all I'm going to say about it. I said my piece. If anyone wants to talk, I'd be more than happy to hear you out. But that's that's basically all I'm going to say. I'm not going to I'm not going to beat that drum too long. But if anyone knows me, if I'm anything, I'm honest. If I'm anything. I'm going to come in when this dries. And I'm going to go ahead and put in some of those negative shapes. So I'm always setting up for other things. Oh, thank you, Michelle. I appreciate that. Raul says it's commercialism at its best. Uh, thinking they need the latest and greatest and all the name and profit of shareholders. Yeah, you know, Raul, unless they can show me uh, why, and not just me, because I'm not in the market for Iwata. I'm a Badger guy, and I'm fine. You know, I'm, I'm just fine. I'm not in the market. They don't have to show me. But I'm speaking up for, for you all, you know. 
Uh, Raul says he's saving his uh, lunch money for one of my customers. Oh, I appreciate that, my friend. And, you know, and that means a lot to me. It really does. Exactly, Willie. So, Willie asked, who has tested them so far? And can we see the work they did or a video they did with that airbrush? Right? Good point. Good point, Willie. Uh, 125 sheets of A3 paper for 80 euros. That's fantastic. That's a great price there, uh, Mr. Stefan. Okay, so pretty soon I'm going to come in with the medium mixture. But first I'm just going to sort of clean up some areas here and there. Let's move over here. Okay. And let's see. Yeah, so let's come in with some medium mixture and I'm going to use the... Uh, extreme the customized extreme Patriot 105 I'm gonna put some media mixture in there that's what I did today I was making uh, mixtures and that took a long time I am running low on ink in my own studio always when you uh, load an airbrush whether it's my ink or paint or whatever always do that far away from your painting so this way you don't damage your painting because as you know there's always these little weird splatters and everything like that could happen you know thanks Colette I appreciate that interesting so I have so let's see what's happening here why am I not getting anything oh there we go great okay so now I have my medium mixture and I always want to test my medium or anything when I'm testing ink for the first time whenever I load the ink I always do a test because you never know when you cleaned it you might not put that needle all the way up so many different variables could have happened and it could just destroy your airbrush okay so here we are back with the medium mixture and we're just going to enrich some of these darks right now and when we enrich those darks we see that things lighten up elsewhere it's that whole thing of simultaneous contrast What you do on one eye, you're going to make sure you do on the other eye. So one of the things I'm going to do after I finish this uh, painting, which probably will be in about two weeks, I'd say. I am actually going to give away a print of this painting and and it's going to be on aluminum and I know that it's going to look beautiful for your collection and I'm going to do that free of charge. The only thing I'm going to charge you is for the shipping which I think you know is like at most in the United States would be like you know eight dollars I'll charge you for the shipping that's it and you'll get the print for free so is anyone out there interested in that getting a, a print on aluminum five by seven of this framed and ready to hang is that something that would be really nice oh yes you do some great paint researches there mr mr stefan i learned a lot from you already so you see how when we darken the the, the, the eyes with the medium mixture things sort of become more rich oh Willie's Willie's down for that that's great that's great you know what's funny sometimes 
Sometimes I feel like the print looks better than the original. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, that print looks so good. So uh, Mr. Uh, John is uh, interested, so that's great. Glad to hear. And that's how I give back to my people here, my community, always. It's not, you know, it's, it's about giving back, you know, it really is. So I have some really nice darks here. Oh, I can definitely put some darks right along this edge, right? And how am I going to do that? By using my shields, uh, my custom custom shield here. Let's make this happen, everybody. And those who take my classes will learn about this process more, uh, which is great. You know, when I when I have my classes, I really don't uh, hold back at all. But I love doing these live streams because you know, not everyone can afford the classes or they're very busy or something like that. So that's why I do these live streams because, you know, I definitely can inspire those who, you know, don't have the time or the, the money to do the classes. And that's why I'm going to continue this. Always, always, always. Hey, Mr. Leahy, how's it going? Good to see you. So, okay, Steve, how you doing? So, so you test you tested the new Takumi. Is that the uh, is that the custom Micron version? And I don't want to put you on the spot, and definitely don't want to put you on the spot. That's not my style. So, you tested the new Takumi, and what are your thoughts on it? Because I respect your I respect your opinion, Mr. Steve. And I love to hear. But I'm not putting you on the spot. You just tell me what you want to, you know, if, if it's, you know, if you don't want me to, it, like I said, it's just that question is out there. Uh, so besides that, how's life in Wisconsin? Mr. S uh, Steve Leahy's in Wisconsin. One of the things about Steve Leahy is great that, uh, oh, so... So, we, so Steve got to use it for a few minutes. So I understand, Steve. You know, uh, so he got like a test drive. So Steve, tell me, uh, uh, this week you're you're not going to be in the same area, of Wisconsin. Where are you going to be next week and next Monday's live stream? So if you guys don't re don't know that Steve Leahy has an amazing live stream every Monday night uh, from six until around seven seven between seven thirty and eight. So, uh, but it, you really learn so much. I mean, I'm doing the magnets because of Steve. So, Steve, I just want to say on behalf of this channel, thank you so much for inspiring me uh, with, you know, your knowledge on your live streams. So, that's my endorsement to you, sir. And I gladly give it. Gladly, gladly. Okay, so when we peel this off, we have to make sure that we're careful and peel it off. But oh, look at that nice dark edge. See that? Bam! That's really nice. So I'm happy about that. I'm going to continue that over here. But first, I'm going to make sure that my, uh, my shield is nice and clean. Oh, HD stencils. I heard good things. I liked what uh, Mr. Leahy did with uh, the HD stencils. That was exciting. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed watching that. Uh, when you did, Steve, when you did the saxophone, that was just out of this world. Oh my God. 
And I know he did that with HD stencils. They're a good outfit. I like HD stencils. And I know it's going to come out really good, Bill. So are you going to do a video on that? Let's see. So let's say I, I did a live stream and I wasn't completely honest with you guys about products. Would you enjoy the live stream more? I don't think so. I think the fact that I tell it like it is, the way I see it, is a value. There's a, a spider keeps hanging out. And I hope it's the same spider, not a group of spiders, uh, in my studio. Oh, so uh, so Steve says the initial reaction is that the feed feels a bit quicker with the new gravity feed. The distance from the feed to the tip of the airbrush now is shorter, but I didn't notice the feed any faster. Oh, thank you for your input, Steve. I appreciate that. Thank you. So I'm just going to make sure that I have the edge here because I, I want to get this really dark edge right here. So use all the tools to your disposal, my friends. That's why I have my glasses on. So, okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on this dark right here. And remember, I try and go away from the uh, shield. The reason being is I don't want it to billow underneath, and I'll put the magnets close, so that helps, you know. Yeah, what's going on, Nameless? I mean, I like spiders because, you know, they kill other insects. Uh, so, but I, I don't want them to turn up in my bed. You know? <laughs> so, you know, uh, I'm conflicted. If, if the spider doesn't bother me, I won't bother the spider. So Steve says overall it's incredibly engineered. The quality is off the chart. No color is cut at all. I compare buying a Micron like buying a Ferrari. Yes, uh, exactly. I agree there. But my question, though, and that I posed to the group earlier, Steve, was, I mean, is this, quote, unquote, an upgrade? And is this a $50 airbrush upgrade? And that was my, my question. And, uh, you know, which I pose to the group before anyone just runs and jumps and does a pre-order that we should definitely uh, see the proof in the pudding, so to speak. You know what I mean? Hey, Dan, how's it going? Good to see you. So that was my question, Steve, is that it's $50 more, there's pre-orders going on, and, and I'm not asking you to say anything about it at all, but that's my, that's my point. I mean, that's my, my stance is, okay, let's hold off on the pre-orders, everybody, you know, let's hold off on that, because it's $50 more. Now, my airbrush is $150, there are other really good $150 airbrushes. So that's 33% of my airbrush. That's $50. Okay. I, you know, we all need to see where that $50 is going. Is that going in the right place? Okay. You know, that could be, but when, so that could be definitely, but when Canon comes out with a new camera, 
and I bought this camera for, you know, $400, and when the next one comes out for $450, I want to see, you know, I want to see performance. That's my point, you know, I want to see that performance. Not just me, I think every one of us as consumers need to see that performance, right? Everyone. Uh, Oh, Tampa one. Oh man, sorry about that, Patrick. Next year, get them next year, Canadians, right? You know. Um, but yeah, definitely. When Canon has a new lens, if they change their fifty millimeter lens and it's more, is it a price hike? Uh, you know, I want to know why they did that. You know, because there are times when Canon in the past will actually have a new lens. It's more expensive. Yet the mount is plastic and not the metal. So it was actually a downgrade. And I guess that's the way I am as a consumer. Um, you know, and I was just saying before pre-orders, we definitely have to see see what's going on first. And and that's that's the way I am with everything. And when I see that, you know, there's only wonderful things talking about it, and I'm like, show me the money. You know what I mean, Steve? That's, that's my point of view, and I don't mind going on a limb and saying that. Yeah, exactly, Steve. So you agree. So, you know, and I appreciate your candor, and I appreciate your honesty. I just appreciate you, Steve. You know that. Big fan of your work. And, uh, but it's cool that you got to see it. So that's a plus that you said good things about it. So that's one thing going for those cats, right? Ferraris. <laughs> yeah, true. No, Ferraris are nice. Definitely. I don't know if I'll be uh, driving a Ferrari anytime soon, my friend. So today I made fresh lemonade from fresh limes and lemons. And a little bit of sugar and water came out pretty good. Thank you, Wendy. Wendy says she she looks beautiful. I appreciate that. And let's continue. I mean, you guys don't see me advocating for every badger out there. Right? I mean, the ones I love are the ones I love. And like this one, the Vega 1000, I just love it. It's like $60. But there's nothing better for doing backgrounds out there, honestly. Whenever I do the white mixture, I use this one. And there's so many things that are good about this airbrush that I can go into that I could show why it's a good airbrush same thing with my extreme patriot arrow i can show it you know oh the honda crvs are really nice i love those those are fantastic so you see how i was able to get that nice hard edge there so what i'm going to do is i am going to jump the gun a little bit and we're going to come in with the white mixture and do some magic today since it is part five right Let's get my act together a little bit here. And when I apply this, I generally don't want to apply more than uh, three, and then I can blend that in a little bit. And you'll see how the likeness will start to happen. See how that is? Look at that. Hey Frankie, how's it going? Good to see you. So glad you're here. Notice that the light moves across. It washes over the forms, right? There's the spider over there. I hope you're the same spider that's over here and that's not your brother, you know? Okay, so 
So I keep an eye on where that spider is. I don't want to be bitten. We already have a Spider-Man. I don't want to be fighting crime. Corvettes are nice. Definitely, Steve-O. I love the Corvettes. But when you see a Ferrari, it does catch your eye, doesn't it, guys? Gotta give it that. See these little changes with the white? It's gonna bring her to life, hopefully. You know what? And that's true, Super. And I love the muscle cars. And some people love muscle cars. That's exactly it. And uh, one of my cars back in the 90s was a 1977 Chevrolet, uh, Chevrolet Camaro LS. And it had a 350 uh, V8 engine. And you know what? When something was wrong with the carburetor, I was able to get to it. And fix it. That was one of my better. That was like my my favorite car ever. So muscle cars. Yeah, I could see the uh, Badgers being equivalent to the American muscle cars. Maybe that's why I gravitate towards them, because I can fix them. I can change. I can change them. Right. I mean, there's a lot to be said for that. Uh, right. Uh, what do you think, Willie? You know about cars. I love the muscle cars, right? The Mustangs and the Camaros and the Firebirds. How about yourself, sir? I wish I had that Camaro still, but I moved from F Florida back to New Jersey and I sold it. I just very upset with myself. Oh, Dan had a few Camaros. That's true. People are uh, very loyal to their brands. Willie says they were made in the USA. Yes. That's so true. See how I'm actually working on the... Uh, now that I'm, I'm working in the white, all of the light mixture and the texture is really coming together. Oh, oh, nameless. My dad did. I just watched. Uh, but, you know, he would work on it. I would watch him. I would learn a little bit. But I wasn't talented. And I loved my dad. He could work on cars. He can fix a radio. He was able to do all that stuff. Me, I, I wasn't talented in that area. Still aren't. But I really admire those who were able to do that. Oh, my God. But yes, those, that Camaro just made me happy. Wow, oh, so you want a 69 Camaro. Oh, that's beautiful. So my 77 Camaro had a dual exhaust, a Holley carburetor. It had rally rims. Uh, it was just so beautiful. It was maroon with a... Uh, beige interior and even though you know and I always shine that thing up put nice tires on it and whenever I went to eat like even to like the deli or whatever in Orlando people would say how much you selling that car for and I was like you see it for sale sign on there <laughs> you know no Camaros are beautiful But like I said, you know, if anyone, you know, thinks that my airbrush uh, is inferior, I go head to head with any Iwata any day. No problem. See how I just, I'm going to come in later with some stronger white pastel, but you see how we can just bring that together right now? Just a little bit of white right here.
Right, definitely. Uh, you know, it does not always the case made in the USA, but with the Camaros, that was definitely the case. Yeah, you we we can't we we always have to we always have to put a company to the test, right? Nameless subscriber, I agree with you guys. And yeah, those Camaros, Steve, were fantastic. Wow, Willie's going to see a 1932 Ford. Wow, that would be some car. When you do, we should we we really want to see pictures of that. And Dan said use the drag race rear engine dragster. That's amazing. That takes a lot of guts. So when I'm doing the white pastels, everything still applies you know the one second rule the grain of the skin all of that building up of the value now remember think of light especially the highlights and the light as snow on a mountaintop you know where the snow where the mountain is facing the direction of the snow is going to get more it's going to be whiter same thing is when um, when the part of her face is most directly facing the light is going to be more white just as in the snow on those mountaintops so that's something to really keep in mind you know Oh man, God, a Ford made in Mexico and a Honda in Ohio. Yeah, that's confusing, definitely. Yeah, it's, it's funny. I was at the uh, deli in the supermarket and they had Swiss cheese from Ireland. I'm confused. <laughs> Right? Swiss cheese from Ireland. That's confusing. I don't know about everyone else, but I was confused with that. So it's interesting, you know, some people might say, Tim, you didn't do, uh, you didn't just talk about the technique today. You talked about, you know, the airbrush news and everything like that and you gave your opinion well this live stream was actually more people were at this live stream by let's say 25 percent than other live streams so i think people need to hear that and need to hear honest opinions right so i'm going to continue that definitely Bill says he believes the plaid or plate is currently the fastest production car ever tested, yet not sure of the new Porsche. Hmm. So Porsches are interesting cars. Never been a big fan of Porsches though. And you see, I'm just moving down, you know, not trying to, still not trying to uh, make all the decisions right now. Just slowly making decisions, uh, not final decisions. And that's great. With this technique, you're able to have a fluidity and make adjustments, which is really great. Electric can be crazy fast. Wow. Electric cars, huh? I want a car like the Jetsons, you know, those, those were good, you know, he, he shot right out of the apartment, so that was good, after he kissed his wife, Jane, Jane his wife, and then daughter Julie, his son Elroy, 
right? <laughs> uh. Oh, the plate. Oh, it, oh, it's a sedan. Oh, I understand. Cool. Like I said, I, I'll, as far as cars, I'll take your guys' lead. And what I'm going to do is kind of, remember I talked about those shapes within the shapes. So now I'm going to really start looking for those shapes within shapes here. Or those values within this value. Just rub that in just like that. Give more luminosity. I know that's not a word, luminosity, but it should be. More luminous. It just sounds, leaves you flat. It's more luminous. No, I, more luminosity sounds better. Even though it's not a word, I'm going to continue using it. Yes, Willie, that song from the from the Jetsons. I know that theme song. You know? When I was a kid, I didn't have all that many friends, so I would watch a lot of TV. And now what I do is I watch I paint a lot. So <laughs> that's <laughs> So uh, watching TV has been replacing with painting and digital art you know playing with digital art and how it pertains to you know our work and our technique and then you and then I know people were talking about Mr. Spacely and Spacely Sprockets, you know. Uh, that was horrible that George had to work for that guy. He was a horrible boss. It's funny that even cartoons has social commentary at the time. Yeah, I would love to have flying cars like the Spaceleys. I mean, like the Jetsons, right? And and that chair that actually is on a conveyor belt, that would be cool, right? That ever happened? No, I never seen that coming, Willie. Uh, and even with Star Trek, with the science fiction, they didn't see it because if they're uh, phasers or their their walkie talkies uh, remember they would call and they would not have any kind of video capability so even even science fiction didn't see the uh, advent of the cell phone and how powerful and that's funny because it really isn't a cell phone it's mostly a computer with a cell phone attached right that's how I feel everybody Oh man, have a great night, Steve. Thanks so much for hanging out. I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, uh, your next live stream, is it going to be from Wisconsin? Uh, or is it going to be from Minnesota? From the north woods of Wisconsin. Very cool. Thanks, Steve. 
I'm going to be looking forward to that Wednesday, uh, Monday at uh, 6 o'clock Eastern Time. And uh, have a great night, sir. Thanks so much for hanging out. Oh, yeah, Steve used to live in, he is still from Wisconsin, from uh, Massachusetts, but he moved to Ohio this year, or was it early last year? So he's a Midwest transplant right now. And you see there's some light here, and I'm just going, you see how I can get luminosity in that shadow, so things sort of kind of change for the better here once I can you know scumble in some of these lights and put some light in life into these shapes here these value shapes if I just kept them without having a dynamic uh, complexity within those shapes then it would just remain very flat but you see now because light is bouncing everywhere it's really happening uh, it now that light is bouncing everywhere you can see that it's affecting all of these shapes and there are no true values there's all these uh, lighter and darker elements in each value shape and that makes a lot of sense and you can definitely see it when you work on it you know oh uh, Wendy you have a great night and thank you so much for your support and and checking out the live stream and letting us know you're feeling better. So that's so cool. Definitely is a healthy live stream tonight. So thank you everybody for hanging out. You know, well we still have... Still have a good 16 minutes to go. Because I always give the full... Uh, full two hours. Now what's great with the white pastel is you can go ahead and take some of your kneaded eraser and you could actually slowly remove some of that white pastel to adjust some of the, sh the shapes here. So it's really great. So you can pull out some of that, uh, some of those values. So right here I can use a neat eraser, I can make it into a point, and I can come down like that. Now right here in the lips, I think I'm going to use a Fonz and Porter or attempt to use it. Just feel it out to see uh, exactly what we have here, if it will work. So. I'm going to blow, blow up her lips here. This might be a little over the top as far as the value goes but we can always relax it which is good right here we have a beautiful light that's right below the nostril here When you're adding anything, make sure that you're not mechanical. If you're doing eyelashes or something, always make sure that you never make things equidistant, right? Or the same size. In nature, in organic quality of nature, everything is sort of a, a random pattern, right? It's, it's randomized. Uh, it's a pattern. But it's, very, it's not the patterns that man would make. Uh, if you ever 
you know, red to golden ratio, uh, you would know like Fibonacci numbers that show up in nature. Uh, it's an equation, but it's not what we would use, you know, very even and stuff like that. Thank you, Colette. I appreciate that. Hey, Hillbilly, thank you. He says this favorite part. <laughs> cool. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of manually try and get uh, this sort of texture here. I try different things. If it doesn't work, I just erase it and go back. But, you know, it's always worth giving it a shot. Why not? And then I can always come in with some darker shots of the airbrush with the light mixture. I could do that, right? Right here, it's just this little slip, slit of light here. Just this little bit of light that comes down, just there. Just there. This little bit of light, right here on the edge of her nostril. We'll just put that there. And it just gives a little added oomph, right? Uh, thank you, Dan, I appreciate that. And so glad you're here, and thank you everybody, Dan, uh, for your encouragement. It means a lot to me. I don't take it lightly. Sometimes, you know, you need to have your trusty Fonz and Porter, right? So I'm, I want to do some really tight dots, and I'm going to practice here first. So I'm probably going to be about three inches away. And I'm just going to put some tiny dots here. Let me get a feeling for it. Just a couple of dots. Just to try and give a little bit of texture here. And then we'll come back with Mr. Fonz and Porter here. And Remember, just like in digital art, you know, the lighter the pressure, the lighter the application is. So, see how we can kind of find that texture, you know? The one second rule is everything. That's the secret, you know? Uh, oh, Willie says he was painting on clayboard today. Erasing is way different. Oh... So, how did that go? Did it go well, working on clayboard? There's a little bit of a line here. Just gonna put that there. Okay. So, let's move up to her nose here. We have this beautiful highlight here. So, not only are we looking for that highlight, but we're gonna look for that shape too, right? We're gonna, it's not just a highlight, it has its shape and it has its edges. So that's what we're going to look for. And remember, you know, with the white pastel, we go ahead and put the values that are inside the values, right? So you have these values that are kind of creeping in here. We're going to put that there. What that does, it kind of gives uh, a feeling of the skin, right? You know, it's, it really does. It really helps. If it helps, you got to put it in. Ah, uh, Frankie, thank you so much for hanging out. I appreciate that. So this is the Fonz and Porter. Uh, I sell it on my website right now. I believe it's nineteen ninety-five. It's originally. It's hard to get. It's originally made for. For. Uh, you know, those who uh, go ahead and for people who work on clothes, like, uh, I forget the name, I can't believe it. Everyone knows the name, I can't believe I'm, I'm having a blank here. The tailor, right, you go to a tailor. So tailors use them. And what's great, it's erasable, and it's not pastel, it's made with, with uh, chalk, but it does the job. And there's nothing out there that goes close to it as far as an art supply. So 
a gentleman in England told me about that and since then you know it but they're really hard to get at times and I do sell them on my website Well, take care, Frankie. Always good to see you. We're going to zoom out. Okay, so you see we're getting somewhere. Now, I'm going to look at it as a whole, and I can see that the highlight is a little, little crazy. So let's just tap that down. Make it a little bit smaller. Just calm it down a little bit. I get overzealous. It's natural. And I may have to reposition that, but we're going to see, to be determined, right? And the clay board was not holding the paint. Uh, oh, so it took off the paint too easily. Yeah, because it's so smooth working on this paper, you're going to get really uh, spoiled on how it really absorbs the uh, ink or the paint, which is really good. And plus, when I work on board, I always use my marble dust technique, which is fantastic. So let's go ahead and start working on some of the highlights in the neck. Right? We got to keep it going. So I think there's going to be a part six and seven with this one, with this lovely lady. That's okay, you know. Time's not a factor, but, you know, what a factor is, is recreating beauty. So that's the most important I know I have to work on that ear, but I'm just really excited about her skin in the neck here. So beautiful. I am going to be back in one second. Just give me a moment, guys. Okay, I am back, and this time it's personal. Uh, I had to go in the back bedroom for a second. Oh my God, it's so nice back there. The room is smaller, and the air conditioner is stronger. I think I'm going to hang out there tomorrow. Let's see. Yeah, Fonz and Porter is amazing. I love it so much. Yeah, airspace, uh, yeah, the paper is just wonderful the way it reacts, you know, and uh, we get used to that, right, Bill? We definitely get used to that, sir. But, you know, working on wood has its wonderful advantages, but it has its advantages, disadvantages, as Willie is finding out, too. What I like to do, Willie, and I'm sure Bill will definitely concur, is, you know, just lower that air pressure and just change your distance and uh, really have to treat it totally different. It's like a whole different animal, right? Your approach has to be totally different. So I'm looking at my painting on the big screen. It's looking, it's looking okay, but we're far away from finished, right? So we have a ways to go. Definitely have to calm down this part of the ear here. It's like, what are you doing, Tim? It's 
same thing here. You know, I went ahead and worked on this texture. I'm not feeling it, so let's get rid of this. If you don't feel it, you can get rid of it. Like anything else, I once seen a woman, she said, when she take, puts on an outfit and she closes her eyes and looks in the mirror, whatever she sees first, blaringly, has to go. So that was really kind of blaring, so I had to get rid of that, you know? Yeah, Fonz and Porter is fantastic, uh, Bill, definitely. Now, if we look at her lip area, there's a little dark that's right next to this light. So how can we achieve that? That's the question. So let's let's blow that up. And let's see. So just a little bit of uh, white ink will do the trick. Let's see. That looks pretty good. Maybe just a little bit over here. There we go. And let's see how that looks when we blow it and come out. Okay, that looks good, but a little ardent. So remember, it's it's uh, a little wet, so we're just gonna wait before we go in there. And, oh, uh, Willie, have a great night, and I really appreciate your time, and thank you so much for hanging out. And thank you, Colette. You have a great night as well. We're at 11.29. We're getting close to the end. And I'm just going to very lightly come in here and calm down that a little bit. Not much, just a little bit. But I did give it a few moments to dry. There we go. And like everything else, you're always looking for the grain of the skin, the grain of the lips. Uh, just like the grain of the wood, very, very important when you paint. So, oh, John, thank you so much. Have a great night. I appreciate it, my friend. Yeah, Bill says any smoother surface will be different. It requires lighter layers, uh, thin paint, barely erases. Yeah, it's just a whole... I find that the ink doesn't work unless you go ahead and use my marble dust uh, mixture. If you ever use that, marble dust and gesso, it creates a nice tooth to it. And it definitely will work very well with the ink after that or paint after that. So... That's what I use for pastel, but it works amazing for airbrush as well. Oh, advice like grip. Cool. Let's bring out that cheek a little bit. Some direction of that of her upper lip and it looks like we are yes metal panels very true that's a whole different ball game as well you know and everybody have a great night thank you so much for hanging out with me before we pre-order let's make sure that we see the proof that's in the pudding first that's my only point with my rant earlier and I'm just always giving this different sides it's so important to do that especially in this industry of the airbrush so thank you so much uh, next week will be part six and we are going to go even further into detail and make a little adjustments here and there going to work on her body and really get that skin texture and really bring her together so I'm very excited I'll see you next week and I hope you have a great night. Good night, uh, Air, and uh, um, good night, Bill, and Blue. Great to talk to you, and 
Great to talk to you, Willie and John and everybody. The, uh, Steve and Mr. Bill and Dan and name of subscriber, Re Raul. Let's see who else was here. Super Killer, great to see you. Uh, let's see, Brad was here. Michelle. Uh, muchísimas gracias, Michelle. Muy buenas, buenas noches. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Colette, Wendy, Patrick. And we have, uh, who else was here? S. Lee, thank you for coming by. I appreciate that. And, and uh, of course, Roy. And if I missed you, um, oh, John Diekman. So, and of course, everybody, I hope you have a great night. Thanks for hanging out with Tim today for part six of Painting the Fine Art Portrait in India Ink and Airbrush, part five. And let me, how do I turn this off? I don't know. Let me see. Just kidding. Here we go.